Don't forget to like and subscribe to Jolie Knott's Crochet. Share with your friends. Hit that little notification bell so you can get notified when new patterns release. All our videos are available in left and right handed tutorials. Hi everyone, welcome back to Jolie Knott's Crochet. I'm Crystal and today we are gonna be making this awesome kids bat wing sweater. Now I do have an adult size and I will leave the link in the description box for the adult size as well. This one is designed to fit the kids a little bit more baggy. You can do some extra increase rows in order to get it past their, their elbow or it will sit just at their elbow the way that it's designed. Now how we're gonna be working this sweater is from the bottom band. We'll work back and forth in rows at the bottom band and then begin working the body of the sweater in V-stitches. We will be increasing those V-stitches to create the bat wing look and then finish out by opening the arms and seaming up the shoulders. Now here's some photos of the adult size bat wing sweater. And like I said, I'll leave the link in the description box below. Both patterns are available in video and written format. The child sizes available are the extra small to extra large and adult sizes are sized from extra small to 4XL. For this pattern today, I am going to be using Lion's Brand Flicka. Now this is a three weight yarn. And in this skein, there are 196 yards. And this is a 50% cotton and a 50% polyester blend. I will go ahead and leave scrolling up on the screen for the approximate yardage per size that you are going to need. Now we are going to be using uh, two different hook sizes, a five millimeter hook for the band and a six millimeter hook for the body of your sweater. You are also going to be needing three stitch markers, a tapestry needle, and some scissors. Okay, go ahead and grab your materials and we will get started. Right, so in order to get started, we are going to take a slip knot and we're going to chain 11. Now, into your second chain from the hook, you are going to place a single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet into every chain space all the way down. So you should have 10 single crochets. All sizes are going to have 10 single crochets. Now for row two, this is gonna be our repeat row. We're gonna chain one and turn our work. And then we're going to single crochet into the back loop only of every single crochet. So you should still have 10 single crochets. And going into the back loop only is going to help us and allow us to have an expandable stretchy band. So our size, our size guide is based off of hip measurements and your band should be smaller than your hip measurement. So for your repeat, you are going to repeat row two. I'll go ahead and leave scrolling up on the screen how many rows per size you're going to need. Okay, here I am, I've completed my band. Once you've got the correct amount of rows for your size that you're doing, we're gonna chain one and we're gonna fold our band in half 
and we're going to work our slip stitch row to join. Now we're going to work it very, very similar to how we made our, um, our rows. So, so what we're going to do is bring your bottom of your band or the other side of your band behind your work. Once you have chained one, we're going to go into the back loop only of your first stitch, and then we're going to go into the first chain space on the other end, and we're going to slip stitch. Back loop only of your next stitch into the chain space on the other side, and slip stitch. And you're gonna do that 10 times. Once you've got that slip stitch, you're gonna flip your band so that your seam is now on the inside. So flip that, turn your work around. And now what we're going to do is chain one, and we're going to work a half double crochet into the side of every row. So your first row is here, and the top of that row is right here. So that's our first half double crochet. Our next half double crochet is into the top of the next row. And you should have, at the end of this round, the same amount of half double crochets as you had of your single crochet rows. Go ahead and complete your first row. And then we'll be switching to a six millimeter hook to begin the rest of our body. Okay, so I'm here completing my half double crochet row and I'm just going to slip stitch to join. And now I'm gonna switch from my five millimeter hook to my six millimeter hook. And I'm gonna chain four. Now this is going to count as a double crochet and a chain one here and throughout the pattern. I'm going to have, I'm gonna double crochet into that same stitch we slip stitched into, and now I've just created my first V stitch. Now I'm gonna skip one stitch and into the next, put another V stitch. Skip one stitch and into the next, we'll put another V stitch, and that's your repeat. Skip one, V-stitch in the next. Skip one, V-stitch in the next. So what's gonna happen now is if you, you're gonna take the amount of rows that you had and divide that by two, and that's how many V-stitches you should have all the way around the bottom of your sweater. Okay, here I am with my last V-stitch of the round, and I am just going to slip stitch to my first chain four to join. From there, I'll chain four again, counting as my double crochet and my chain one space, double crochet into the same space to create a V, and then continue along with my V's. And I'm going to repeat this V-stitch row. We're going to repeat this V-stitch row until we have eight total rows. Now our first row was the half double crochet row, 
and then we'll have eight rows of V stitches. So I am going to work up my rows of V stitches and then we will meet each other back so I can teach you how to begin your increase rows. Okay, so here I have increased my rows of V stitches. I don't have any increases on the end. Your work should start curving because we did increase here with our half double crochets. We skipped one stitch and put a V stitch, one stitch, put a V stitch. So your work should be with a large curve like this, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we are going to mark each side. We're gonna mark the side here to represent the side of our work. And with the same amount of V stitches on the front and the back, we will then mark here. And that's where we're gonna do our increases for the next so ever many rows that I will let you know. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is when we join with our um, chain four, this is gonna be a little bit differently because we're gonna set ourselves up to work before this V stitch. So we're gonna join with a single crochet. Now this single crochet is going to separate these two V stitches, one for the front and one for the back and I am going to place my single crochet over that stitch. I'm sorry, I'm going to place my stitch marker over that single crochet. I'm going to scroll up on the screen how many V stitches you should have per size. You'll take half of that amount of V stitches and we'll put a stitch marker on this side to separate the front and the back. Okay, so here is my last V stitch of the front and then my last, my first V stitch of the back. So I'm going to put my second stitch marker in between those two V stitches. Okay, now getting started with our increase. Our increases are going to be a two row repeat. So for each row, we will increase one V per stitch marker. So essentially you'll have two increases per row. So the first increase, the way we're gonna work that is we are going to chain four. That will count as your first double crochet and your first chain space. And then we're gonna double crochet right over that stitch marker, right over the stitch, the single crochet. So this now is the increased V stitch for this row. And this will now be considered, well, the center, I guess the center of the side. So I'm gonna move my stitch marker up. And this will now be the new center for this row. Now working down the front, we will make a V stitch into every V stitch to the next stitch marker. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you back over there. Okay, so I've reached my next stitch marker. This is the second increase of my row. Remember we're increasing twice, one V stitch per stitch marker. So in between these two V-stitches, that's where I'm gonna add my increased V-stitch. And this is now my center point. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out and move it up to my new center point, even though it's on the side. Now I'm gonna work V-stitches into every V-stitch back to the front where we began and I will meet you back 
to show you how we are going to join. Okay, here I am at the end of row nine. This is my first increase. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain to join, and then I'm going to slip stitch over one more chain. So my increase here, I'm going to turn this one V stitch into two. So I'm gonna put two V stitches. However, our first V stitch is gonna be right now, and our last V stitch, the second one, is gonna be when we come back around. We're gonna work over that slip stitch here. So I'm going to chain four, double crochet into the same V stitch, and I'm not gonna move my stitch marker just yet. I'm gonna now work my V-stitches on top of every V-stitch down to my next stitch marker, and then I will show you how we work our, vin our um, increase. Okay, here is how our next increase is going to work for round 10. My center V-stitch is here. Remember, we are putting two V-stitches, we're increasing a V-stitch, so we're gonna add two V-stitches into that one V-stitch. And then what I'm gonna do is move my stitch marker up and place it between these two V-stitches. And when you get to the next round, you'll repeat you'll repeat like we did in round nine. And that's where your V-stitch increase will be. Now I am going to V-stitch into every V-stitch back to the beginning, and I will meet you right back there so I can show you how we are going to join and complete the round with our next V-stitch increase. Okay, here we are at the end of round 12. And this is where we added our first V-stitch into our middle V-stitch. So now we need to put our second one. So just working over that slip stitch, we're gonna go ahead and add our second V-stitch. And then just like we did down here, we are going to single crochet to join. We'll repeat like we did in round nine. By chaining four, working your double crochet over your V-stitch, and now this is your added V-stitch increase for the next round. I am going to leave this stitch marker here. Well, I'm actually going to move it a little. This will be the first row of my increase. And this is just gonna help me for when I count my increases to know where my first row of my increase started. And if you have, you will want to go ahead and grab one more stitch marker and place it in that V because this is where we will then do our next increase in the next round. You're gonna repeat rounds nine and 10. I'm gonna leave scrolling up on the screen how many repeats you're going to need per size in order to grow your sweater in lengthwise or widthwise as well as lengthwise. Now, if your child is on the larger side or the taller side of that size, then you wanna do one extra increase. Meet me back here when you're finished with your repeats and I'll show you how we are gonna separate panels for our front and our back. Once you are done with your repeats, we're gonna to start to work back and forth in separate panels for the front and the back so that we can create an armhole. Now this will not have any increasing or decreasing. What we're going to do is once you have slip stitched, this is your first 
V of the row, and this is your last V of the back row. So I'm going to chain three, and that's gonna count as a beginning double crochet. And now I'm going to put one V stitch into the first V stitch. From there, I'm gonna place one V stitch on top of each V stitch all the way down. I'm gonna continue that and I will meet you back at the next stitch marker. Okay, so here is the last V-stitch of this side. And remember, we're just working back and forth without any um, increasing or decreasing. This is not a V-stitch, this is the center. So this is the first V-stitch of this is the last V-stitch of the side, and then this is the first one of the next side. So how I'm gonna end this row is just put a double crochet right into the last part of that V. And that is the end of the first row for the amount of repeats that you need for your size. So now we're gonna chain three, turn your work, and we're gonna do the same thing now going back down the other side. So my first V-stitch is going to be in my first V-stitch. And you'll work your V-stitches all the way down for your correct amount of rows. When you get to the end, you will end with a double crochet on top of your chain three, and then when you turn your work, your first V will be in this V stitch, okay? So do that for the correct amount of rows, and then do it for the other side as well, so you have two sides that are now then split open, and I will meet you back here so we can get started on uh, sewing up the neckline and finishing up all our fin finishing touches. Okay, everybody, here I am. I have completed my rows for my armholes. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure that you leave a long tail for sewing up your shoulder and your arm seam. Um, what we're doing here is we are finding our middle V stitches. I will leave on the screen for you how many V stitches per size you should have for the middle. Now. Once I count them out, or once you count yours out, you're gonna put a stitch marker between those V stitches through both sides, your front and your back. And this is gonna be the opening for your neck hole. Feel free to customize this opening for the size that you would like. I had some of my testers leave extra V-stitches open if they wanted a wider neck or if they wanted it to sit off the shoulder a bit. So you can customize the neck opening to what your desired opening is. From there, we'll move to the side and then we'll begin whip stitching from our arm all the way up to the neck, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So here's how we're gonna do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the long tail end that we left and thread our tapestry needle. Starting from our first stitch, we're gonna go through the top two loops. So through your V-stitch. And then on the other side, one side's gonna be a um, double crochet, one side's gonna be a chain three. And then we're gonna go through the chain three on the other side and pull through. Now we just want to make sure that as we're pulling our stitches through, they don't tangle up. Now I'm going to go through the V-stitch the double crochet in my V-stitch and through the double crochet in my V-stitch on the other side and pull it through through my chain 
and through the chain on the other side and pull that through. Through the double crochet, the V's on the double crochet and the same on the other side. And you're just gonna keep doing that all the way up until you get to your neck, um, the stitch marker for your neck, and you'll do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and we've got one last step to do before we're completed. We're gonna work on our neckline to finish up the neckline. All right, so finish whip stitching your guys's together and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so I have just completed sewing up my seams for my arms, and now I'm left with my neckline. What we're going to do is we're just going to finish this up with a single crochet row to eliminate the stretch that it's going to give. Otherwise, it's going to stretch way too much. So I am going to attach my yarn. going to attach my yarn to one of the ends so I have one less end to sew in and what I'm going to do I am going to put my hook into the first double crochet of the side and pull up a loop Chain one for height, and now I'm going to single crochet into every double crochet and chain space all the way around. And that's it. That's our super simple uh, closing up the neckline and finishing that off is just single crocheting into every stitch and chain space that presents itself. Okay? Thank you everybody for watching Jolie Knott's Crochet. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Facebook under Jolie Knott's Crochet. And if you're not a member of our Jolie Knott's Crochet community group on Facebook, find us and share with us what you've created.